All right, we're going to take a look at problems 7 and 8 from the 2015 state target round. Um, some kind of cool problems. All right, so number 7. When trying to recall some facts about the ages of his three aunts, Josh made the following claims. Alice is 15 years younger than twice Catherine's age. And I took the liberty to write equations for these uh, for these um, uh, statements. Sorry, uh, Beatrice is 12 years older than half of Alice's age. B is equal to A divided by 2 plus 12. Catherine is 8 years younger than Beatrice. C is equal to B minus 8. And the three women's ages add up to exactly 100 years. A plus B equals 100. Yeah. But unfortunately, much like me, Josh's memory is not perfect. And one of these three facts is just not true. But we know that the ant's age is going to be an integer of years. We need to figure out how old Beatrice is. So we need to make some assumptions and guess and check, really. We're going to have to assume that three equations are right and see if it works. Um, so for the just to start with, I'm going to assume that the fourth statement is correct because that makes life a little bit easier. So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to assume, for starters, that I should have calibrated my board beforehand. Nothing's better than watching a video of me calibrate my Promethean board. I mean, it's really cool. Look at this. I'm now hitting the crosshairs. OK. All right, so. OK, here we go. Um, did yeah. you post a review packet? Here's the funny thing. My computer had updates, and I lost my connection to my um, server account. Okay. If you would be as good enough to go ask Mr. Smith or Mr. Shem to come and help me find it, okay, that would well. be wonderful. But until then, I can't get it. Deal. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry about that. So I'm going to assume that this equation is correct, because otherwise it makes life much harder. So I'm going to just assume that these three are correct and see if I get an answer that is an integer. All right. So in this equation, we have A and C, B and A. And so what I want to do is I want to get everything in terms of one age. So um, I'm going to have to get everything in terms of A. So right now I have A is equal to 2C minus 15. Well, that's going to be equal to A minus 15 over 2 is equal to C. And this one's already in terms of B, so I'm good to go. So I have A plus B. Well, b is just a over 2 plus 12 plus c. And c is equal to a minus 15. That's a minus. Minus 15 over 2. And that will equal 100. So I want to get rid of the divided by 2. So I'm going to multiply everything here by 2. So I get 2a plus a plus 24 four plus a minus 15 is equal to 200. So I end up with 4a plus 24 minus 15 is 9 is equal to 100. And right now I can tell if I subtract 9 from both sides, a is not going to be an integer. So I know that these three aren't correct. All right, so I've eliminated that. So now, and this is the worst part of guessing and checking, I know, I'm going to make an assumption of other ones that are correct and see if I get integer answers. So let's try 
Oops. So let's try A and this one. So here we have C and C. So I need to get everything in terms of A and B. So already I have A. A is equal to C minus 15. That's my A plus B. Well, B is going to be equal to C plus 8 plus C is equal to 100. So I have C, C, and C, so that's 4C, negative 15, plus 8. Oh my goodness, that's going to give me a negative 7. And again, I can tell right now that that isn't going to give me an integer answer for C. So that's no good either. So the way it's going, I'm starting to wonder if I can have odd numbers in my... Uh, in in my uh, correct equation. So I'm tempted to try these three now because they all have even numbers. So I have a better chance, I think. So we have Bs and Bs. So I can get A if I need to get A by itself and uh, I already have C by itself and I can get everything in terms of B. So I have B is equal to A over 2 plus 12. Well, so that's 2b plus a plus 24. Just multiply everything by 2. Sorry, it's an equals. So then that means 2b minus 24 is equal to a. So then on my equation here, I can go 2b minus 24 plus b plus b minus a. 8 is equal to 100. So I have 1, 2, check that out. I have 4 b's and negative 24 minus 8. So that's going to be negative 32 is equal to 100. Now this looks promising. So I add 32, add 32, and that will give me 4 b is equal to 1, 32. Okay, I know that I can divide both sides by 4, divide by 4, and that's going to give me a, an integer answer. So 4 goes into 13 three times, carry the 1. 4 goes into 12 three times, so that means she is 33. I certainly hope that's the answer. Because remember, it doesn't ask what the age of all of them is, it's just what is the age of B. And I should have known that going in because <coughs> in, a, in a problem with a time crunch, I should be looking for how do I write things that only have Bs, because that way it'll be a whole lot faster. Okay. Also, once I, once I realized I have an odd number it's not going to work. I should have just switched straight to things that only had even numbers. All right, now this problem is really, really cool. Um, and when you're dealing with geometry problems, I do much better when I draw things out. So uh, we need to find the ratio, oops, the ratio of the area of the triangle over the area of the circle. And so I am just going to make a little diagram here. This is what I'm looking for. And right away I know that the area of the circle is going to be pi r squared because that's how you find the area of a triangle. Well, first things first. I know that this is going to be 50 because this is an equilateral triangle and hello, because I know they like to do that. And so I know this part is 100. I know this part is 100. So that equals this part right here, right? Which means that this area right here is going to be equal to the area of the circle. Don't forget I'm taking this and trading it for that. So do you have the, co do you have the cough medicine? Uh, no. OK, I would grab it. And we're, we're going out to dinner really quick, so you can't really dawdle. 
So we know that this is pi. An eraser. We know that this is pi r squared. And so the area that we don't know, however, is this area right here. And so that's going to be the crux of the problem. I need to find the area of this shape right here. How am I going to do that? Well, the way it's drawn right now, I'm going to have a rough go of it. So I need to add some lines to help things out. Now, I know that tangent lines always meet at a right angle. And I'm going to drop this. And so now I have a right angle. And since this is an equilateral triangle, this whole measurement is 60 which makes this 30, which makes this angle 60. I have a 30, 60 right triangle. It's amazing how many times 30, 60 right triangles come up in these problems. Well, if I know that this is r, then I know that this length here is 2r, but that doesn't really help me get anywhere because I'm looking for the area, right? And this is going to be r times the square root of 3. If I put in the other one, oh, so now I have a shape that looks like this, right? And I can find the area of this shape. Then I can find the area of this sector and subtract it out from the area of this quadrilateral, and I'll, I'll, get, th I'll get that red area. So the area of one of these triangles is 1 half base times height. And I have two of them, so these cancel out. So therefore, the area of this whole shape, the red and the green, is going to be r squared times the square root of 3, because r times r is r squared. All right. So then, my next step is to find the area of the sector. Well, this whole thing is 120, because I have 60 plus 60. 120 is 1 third of the circle. So that means the, this section right here is just going to be 1 third pi r squared. So I just need to subtract that out. OK. Now I'm ready to go because I know that this area is uh, pi r squared. I know the area of the red section is r squared, and I'm adding it because I remember I need this piece. That doesn't look right. Oh well. Uh, root 3 minus 1 third pi r squared. Well, I have pi r squared here, and I have a pi r squared here. So if I have 1 pi r squared and I take 1 third pi r squared away, I am left with 2 thirds pi r squared plus r squared, square root of 3, all over pi r squared. Well, I can clearly see that r squared occurs in all, all of these. So I can just divide out the r squared. And I can see that pi occurs here and here, but not here, right? So I still have divided by pi, which means I end up with 2 thirds plus the square root of 3 divided by pi. Well, 2 thirds is 0.66 repeating. But I don't know what this is off the top of my head. So I, luckily, we're allowed to use a calculator. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to say 3 uh, square root of 3. And I'm going to divide it by 3.14. And so I get 0.55. And it says to the nearest hundredth, so I don't need to go any further. And so I'm going to add these together. Anytime now. Hello. And so I get 1.217, which is approximately 1.22. And that's my answer. Yeah.